This is the Haleakala Valley on the island of Maui. NASA uses alien landscapes like these to test their Mars rovers before sending them off to the red planet. The soil here is made of cinders. The altitude is over a mile high. And the weather is dry, sunny, windy, and freezing. It's the last place you'd expect Mother Nature to start gardening. This is the Halle Akala Silver Sword. Its fat leaves store water and are covered with tiny hairs that pick up humidity in the dry air and send it down as liquid water to the roots. Water as liquid, or carried on the wind, or coursing across the landscape, makes Earth a thriving paradise of life. Water with a dash of carbon and a little energy from the sun are the simple ingredients for life to blossom. In the canyons of this undersea world, there is no sunlight and the water pressure is, to put it simply, bone crushing. And yet, more than a mile down from the surface, life flourishes. These hydrothermal vents leak out heat and minerals from the Earth's core. They're called black smokers and ooze clouds of sulfur, which is toxic and smelly to you and me. But to the deep sea bacteria that thrive here, it's good wholesome nutrition. If life can thrive here in the dark, pressurized depths of Earth's oceans, what about other oceans, like the one on Enceladus? For years, we have searched the planets in our solar system for signs of alien life. But perhaps it will be a moon that first confirms that we are not alone. Some moons have all the key ingredients for life. Water, carbon, and energy. Energy, not from the sun or from volcanoes but from massive tides, crammed beneath the icy crusts and dragged around by Saturn's colossal gravitation. Next stop, the moons of the gas giant Jupiter. Ganymede the largest moon in the solar system. This big guy is covered with an icy crust, which hides an astonishing surprise. Perhaps more salt water than all of the oceans on Earth combined. And what's waiting for us here on the surface of our neighbor, Mars? These are actual images captured by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, 
that shows the red planet covered in topsoil. When the NASA rover Curiosity first scooped up a handful of this red soil, geologists thought it looked surprisingly familiar, like the soil back home in Hawaii. Mars has water, masses of it frozen at the poles and more buried within its soil. Water, carbon, energy from the sun, all the basic ingredients for life are here. That's why biologists wouldn't be surprised to find life on Mars. Not the kind with flying saucers and ray guns, but still fascinating, microscopic, and very real life. They would have to be resilient, able to withstand extreme temperatures and a constant bombardment by radiation from space. I am constantly reminded of the tenacity of life. Perhaps life in our solar system is far more common than we realize. In 2022, an ESA spacecraft will take a closer look at Jupiter's moon Europa and its mysterious red cracks. Ice-penetrating radar will show us what lies beneath the surface of this strangely scarred world. Astrobiologists constantly scour space for the conditions that support life. And their search doesn't end in our own backyard. It's beyond our solar system that the really exciting discoveries are waiting. These are the pillars of creation. Massive clouds of gas and dust. This cloud of dust is a star factory in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. It's in awe-inspiring places like this where nature churns out billions and billions of stars. And around many of those stars, planets, perhaps as many as 100 billion, And on those planets, possibilities. Some of the planets we have already found are much older than Earth. Worlds more than twice the age of Earth. If such planets have life, it could have evolved much further than us. This is the Kepler telescope, a remarkable planet hunter that has already discovered more than half the known planets beyond our solar system. But how? With extraordinary sensitivity, Kepler is able to lock onto distant stars to detect if something passes in front of them. 
tiny dots that dim the star's light ever so slightly. Tiny dots equal planets. Only a month into operation, Kepler found its first giant planets, all bigger than Jupiter. Slowly but surely, even so they are much harder to find, Kepler has discovered more and more small planets. And among those, the first potentially Earth-like worlds. The other amazing thing is that Kepler has found all these planets by searching only a tiny piece of the galaxy. Until recently, Kepler was always focused on exactly the same area of the Milky Way, spanning only 2% of the night sky. And in this tiny area, it has detected thousands of planets orbiting alien suns. I think this would have been one of Carl Sagan's dreams coming true. <laughs>